In this video, we're going to go over composition by percent mass and the convention for writing chemical equations. So composition by percent mass is essentially just looking at the percent mass of each compound. So when you look at the total mass of a molecule, how much of the mass is represented by each element in the compound. So to see how this works, let's look at an example where we want to calculate the percent mass of perchloric acid, HClO4. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to calculate the total mass. So we have hydrogen, we have chlorine, and we have four molecules of, or four oxygen atoms. So this is where you need to go to the periodic table, right? So hydrogen, if you look at the periodic table, it has an atomic weight of one. So that means we'll just use one gram if we're looking at one mole. Chlorine, if you look at the periodic table, it has an atomic weight of 35.5. So 35.5 grams in one mole. And oxygen has an um, atomic weight of 16 grams per mole, but here we're working with four oxygen atoms per perchloric acid molecules. So we have to multiply that 16 by four. So that's 64 grams. So this is telling us uh, if we have one mole of HCO4, it would have a total weight of one plus 35.5 plus 64. And if we add up these values, it's gonna be 100.5 grams per mole of HClO4. All right, so now that we know what the molecular or the molar mass of HClO4 is, we can now calculate the percent mass of each. So how much do each of these elements contribute to the total mass? Which just looking at the numbers, you can see that it should be mostly oxygen, then chlorine, and a little bit of hydrogen. So to calculate these values, if you want the percent mass of hydrogen, then you're gonna take the mass of hydrogen, which is one gram, and you're gonna divide it by the total mass, 100.5 100 grams, which if you calculate, that's approximately 1%. So the percent mass of hydrogen in perchloric acid is about 1%. Then we can take a look at chlorine. So the percent mass of chlorine, it's 35.5 grams in the total of 100.5 grams. And that's about 35.5%, uh, right? So in this case, let's just go ahead and say about 35%. And finally, we can calculate oxygen. So the percent mass of oxygen, this is gonna be the 64 grams over the total of 100.5 grams. And this is going to be about 64%. So here we have the percent mass for perchloric acid. It's 1% hydrogen, 35% chlorine, and 64% oxygen. And this isn't something that you can tell just by looking at the molecular formula of perchloric acid. So the percent mass of any compound has to be calculated using this approach. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the convention for writing chemical equations. So you've probably seen many chemical equations before. So this is just reviewing some of the common conventions. So the first thing I want to point out is right in the center, there is the arrow, right? So the arrow is important for determining the direction of the reaction. So the way that this reaction is written, it means that this reaction is proceeding in the forward direction from left to right. That would make these molecules on the left, the reactants, and these molecules on the right, the products. And the fact that this arrow only faces in the forward direction essentially means that there is no reverse reaction going on. In some reactions, you're gonna see an equilibrium arrow, meaning that both the forward and the reverse reactions are proceeding. The next thing that we want to pay attention to are the coefficients. So that would be these numbers that I'm pointing out here.
you're actually going to notice for most of these things there is no number written there. So if there's no number in the front, you assume that it is 1. The coefficients are important because it tells you how many of each molecule is uh, participating in the reaction or getting formed as products. So in this case, that tells us we have one molecule of calcium carbonate, two molecules of hydrochloric acid reacting together. After the reaction, they produce one molecule of carbon dioxide, one molecule of water, and one molecule of calcium chloride. So the last thing that we can discuss is what is in these parentheses? So this is referring to the states of matter. So essentially, the compounds that are being used as reactants or produced as products, are they solids, liquids, gases, or aqueous? So in this case, we can see that it's a solid calcium carbonate with aqueous hydrochloric acid forming gaseous carbon dioxide, liquid water, and aqueous calcium chloride. Okay. So those are the general conventions for writing chemical equations. In later videos, we're going to talk about how to balance equations so you can add up with an equation that looks like this.